All right, welcome to section 11 of how to set up your own Raspberry Pi to monitor and remote control a greenhouse or any other thing you would want to remote control or monitor. Uh, in this section, we'll discuss how to wire up a Dallas Instruments DS18B20 one wire digital thermal sensor. We'll see how to navigate to it in Linux and test it to make sure it's working. We'll also briefly discuss one wire networks. There's more, inform more information below on one wire networks not discussed in this video. And I'll just mention now that it is uh, a very complex topic given that it's based on an actual network infrastructure. Uh, that said, it's fairly simple in concept, but I do recommend that you go down and read the link uh, on reliable long wire networks. Uh, this is at the bottom of the description. All this will be in the description of the video. All right. That said, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this page first. Uh, and just understand basically how we're connecting the one wire sensor to the Raspberry Pi. So uh, the link for this will also be in the description. This is uh, hamradio.cc. This is a friend of mine's forum. And actually this is the person who helped me learn how to hook up a Raspberry Pi and get started and data logging and all this sort of stuff. So I just want to say thank you to Aaron and uh, I want to throw a shout out to hamradio.cc for all the information they have. You would not believe the incredible amount of information he has on this forum. Well worth checking out. Uh, so thanks Aaron for all your help. Uh, it's much appreciated. Uh, I don't think I ever could have done this without you to be honest. So thanks. Uh, so he actually set up a uh, solar heater system uh, at his place to uh, collect sun and turn on a fan and blow that warm air up from the sun uh, into his bedroom. Uh, so similar project, a little bit different application, um, but uh, the great thing that he did in this post uh, is he talks about connecting it up and how to actually do it. And also uh, his first sensor, they actually had uh, ground and data switched in color. So uh, that's something to be uh, to be aware of. Um, you typically won't hurt the sensor if you switch ground and data, but uh, if you hit hot on ground or data and ground the other side, you could definitely end up with an issue. I would really recommend you double check your connections. Um, I have not had any of my sensors that I ordered come with ground and data reversed. Uh, usually the data is uh, yellow and ground will be green or black or brown something like that so the ground will be the darker color typically and the data will be the yellow or maybe it might be white whatever uh, the red or orange wire is almost always going to be your positive so start with that you'll need a 4.7k ohm resistor so that's a resistor that's yellow violet red and you'll want a 5% gold tolerance uh, resistor for that. Um, you probably you probably could get away with a 20% resistor and be fine, but um, I recommend you keep it within tolerance. Uh, I found up to 12 sensors, the 4.7k ohm resistor works well. You go above 12 sensors, I found you had to push that resistor down to a 2.2k ohm resistor, at least in my application, but I should mentioned that uh, most of my wire runs are at least 20 feet long. Some of them are 30 and 35 feet long. So it's quite a long run to some of these sensors on my system. So if you're wiring something where your wire runs are shorter, you may not need to do that. Uh, but you'll know when sensors start glitching out on you because they won't be collecting data. We'll get into that in another video. Uh, but basically what you want to do is connect to the GPIO4 to the data and you want to connect the power 3.3 volt side you can also use 5 these one wire sensors will take up to 5.5 volts I think so you are actually safe at 5 if you wanted to use the 5 but I recommend starting with the 3.3 volt bus uh, so power to the 3.3 volt side to the pin here <coughs> and uh, we'll go into the actual pin layout on the board in just a minute and uh, ground to ground and then you'll notice that this resistor shunts across between data and power and what that does is provide a pull-up reference for the chip 
So uh, if you don't understand what that means, don't worry about it. it. It's not really super important that you understand it all. Uh, just that you have to understand that you do need the, sen the resistor between these uh, in order to help stabilize this connection and, and make these sensors work reliably. So uh, if you don't have a 4.7K ohm resistor, you can get them online pretty cheap. Um, used to be able to get that kind of stuff at a local Radio Shack, but Radio Shack is out of business, and I don't know of any uh, local businesses that might carry that kind of stuff. You could call around, but you're probably better off just to go online, order it, and wait the time. That said, uh, so this is your basic uh, layout of how you're going to connect it, and uh, what we'll do next is go over and have a look at uh, the GPIO header diagram. And... Uh, We'll just uh, zoom in on this a bit. And so you can see uh, that by this diagram, you can tell what each pin does for what. Let's see, I'll put a, uh, I'll put a close-up screenshot of this right here for you uh, in this video as well, right here. Okay, and uh, so that's the basics on it, on how to connect it. Uh, once you get, uh, I would recommend you start with one sensor and get familiar with it before you start hooking up all kinds of stuff. And I would recommend you hook that sensor up directly, and not uh, not be um, not be running long wires to it because that really complicates things. Uh, so just start uh, by connecting your sensor in this manner, as discussed, as shown. Okay. So, just tying the pieces together, pin 1 is on the SD card end of the Raspberry Pi. So, pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on and so forth. So, we'll just go ahead and uh, look at this diagram. I'll share this link in the description as well, of course. Uh, and you can see that you can go through and look at the pins, and it gives you the information on each pin as you go through it. So that should help you navigate getting the correct pins. We're using pin 7 or GPIO 4, pin 1 or 3.3 volt power, and pin 6 or ground. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and go over to the trainer and we'll get this, uh, the rest of this going. So you'll want to go to this line here, the pseudo mod probe W1 GPIO. And you'll go ahead and copy that in first. You'll want to get in sudo su as the super user. And uh, then we'll do the mod probe command. And we'll do the uh, w1 therm mod probe command. You need both of these. Okay. And then once we've done that, it, assuming you've already hooked up the hardware as per the instructions in this video, uh, you, we'll go ahead, I'll, uh, I don't have actual hardware hooked up to the trainer Pi, so I'm going to go over to the actual greenhouse live Pi, and we'll go from there. So the next command that you'll want to enter is you want to change directories to sysbuswd1 devices with cd sysbuswd1 devices, and then we'll go ahead and we'll use the ls command to list the files in that directory, and you'll notice that a whole bunch of files come up. Each one of these files is the address of a thermal sensor. So in this case, there's 23 sensors currently connected to the greenhouse pie. And we're going to go ahead and, uh, well, let's see. Let me back up for a sec. You'll, you'll probably only have one sensor connected initially for testing. So the address of that sensor will show up. So now anytime you want to pull that sensor to get information from it, that's the address you'll reference. We'll use this later on in the Python code to pull the sensor and grab the data from the sensor and return it and put it into a text file. And then we'll take it from the text file and transfer it and put it into the database. But for now, you just need to make sure that your, uh, that your hardware is connected properly and that you're able to test it. So we'll do cat w1 underscore slave. I'm sorry first you want to change directories to the sensor that it's in. My bad. Getting ahead of myself. So you'll highlight it and that'll copy it to the clipboard and then you do CD space and uh, just right click to paste in the sensor's address 
and you'll see that you've changed directories to that sensor. And then we'll do the cat w1 slave command to see if the sensor's working correctly. And if you get a CRC back and a yes and a bunch of information like this, address information or hex, uh, then you'll know that your sensor is working correctly. So that's a good sign. You've installed and tested your first one wire sensor on a Raspberry Pi. And uh, in the next section, we'll go into how to install the Adafruit DHT22 humidity and thermal sensor. And uh, so we'll install the hardware on that and test it and make sure that that's working. And then we'll move on and start working with Python code and databases and all that sort of stuff. I hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining. And I thank you for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network.